Hi everyone, I'm Hales and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you the start of a process that I'm hoping to go through to sort my craft, my sewing stuff out. I feel like I am overrunning the conservatory, which is my sewing room. I'm running out of space and I feel like I need to get more patterns. I should have more fabric. I should be making more stuff. I should, I should, I should. I don't have the room. I don't have the time. So I really need to scale back and focus because I find that I have too many projects, too much going on in my head and then nothing gets done. And then I find I've gone three weeks without actually making anything and the stuff's sitting there. And let me, let me just show you sort of the reality of what my sewing space looks like. I just basically, I haven't really tidied up, but I have taken the washing out of the conservatory. Let me just um, pan you around. So as many of you know, our dining room here leads open plan into our conservatory, which is where my sewing space is. This is a tidied up reality at the minute because we have a project which I haven't cut out yet, but it has, this fabric has been pre-washed. This, um, these like bits of tracing paper here, that is from the pattern pieces. I have stuff on the chair. Um, these are patterns which I was going to make a video about, but I haven't got round to it. This is macrame time that I was going to make a rope bowl with. There's some Taylor's chalk on top of my box here. I do normally have a clock here, but I take it away when I'm filming because otherwise you'll, it will look really odd with for editing and things. Um, what the time it might jump about and then we have a small selection of sort of succulent plants going on here and then we have the tub chair over in the corner and then if I just pan you down but I might the camera might go a bit wibbly wobbly this is my calyx unit I don't like it well the unit is handy to hold a lot of stuff but as you can see, the drawers are bursting open. I would like baskets, but I can't order them online and we live about an hour and a half away from an Ikea. Um, so here is what I try to hide. So this bag down here has fabric scraps in. This is a beach bag that I made recently and there's I've just done a video about that, so I will link that in the description box below. This is, contains threads and things. And then, let me, I'll move the camera so you can see what's going on there. And then I've put a light on because um, it's the light is fading as I'm filming this on Thursday night. And that is some of the clean washing waiting to be ironed. The rest I have actually bagged up. But yeah, it looks fairly tidy, but I, it's not really a workable space. If you look, there's no big open area to work in. I was watching some decluttering videos and minimalism videos recently and listened to some podcasts and it really kind of struck a chord with me and I felt like the re one of the reasons I've been so sort of overwhelmed with projects, it's my parents' golden wedding, wedding anniversary at the end of July, I said as my present I would decorate the garden, I'll put a picture in of the garden, it's massive, so now I'm thinking how on earth do I make it look? nice for an outdoor party it won't be loads because there's still social restrictions and things in place or there may be so there's in like 22 but i'm thinking okay so I've, i need to do the decoration some of it can't be done till last minute perhaps i should make some stuff how do i do it on a budget how do i make it look nice so i've got all this going on and then i'm thinking okay when the start when it's summer holidays in a couple of weeks time um, then we're going out and about, I won't be wearing my work clothes and so I need some clothes for that. Nothing really fits. Old stuff which did fit was faded and so I ditched that but my wardrobe is full. My wardrobe is absolutely rammed full and then I come downstairs and my boxes are full. My calyx unit is bursting but then I'm thinking well I could and I have got some fabric to make um, a couple of summer dresses with and I was like I don't have a pattern. I don't have a summer pattern like dress that I want to make. Yeah I have one calyx box absolutely bursting with patterns. Um, so I realised what I need to do is I need to declutter. I need to face the fact that I don't know if sewing has turned me into a hoarder. I think I have, well, I would say hoarder. I'm not like the people you see on telly, they make programs about who have, 
you know, like their rooms piled so high they can't crawl in and they're having to like sleep in the kitchen and things. I'm on not that kind of scale of hoarding, but I think I collect stuff and I just get stuff. And the trouble is, I think with sewing, with perhaps any hobby, it's nice to have stuff because it's that moment where you shop and it arrives and it makes you feel good and happy that you have this brand new thing then it has to be made into something and we don't always have the motivation all the time to do that and then for me personally it can have a detrimental effect and so I've realised that I need to sort my drawers out why am I like I'll show you in a second but I'm I still have a big sewing box that was given to me when I was a child for a birthday by one of my grandmas who has long since passed away and it's falling to bits the little sort of inner plastic shelf has perished and so why am I keeping it but that's taking up quite a big bit of space in my drawer and I can't see anything because with the boxes I will put some footage in as I'm talking I think so with the boxes you look down you can see the top fabric or the top item and you can't see below it. But the trouble is with the conservatory being south facing, it gets really sunny. So I can't have my fabrics on show because they will fade in the sun because everything seems to fade in this room because it's just, you know, so light. So it does have to be closed away and I don't have doors. And if I ordered doors for this unit, this unit was given to me by a work colleague and it was an old one. She just said I could have it for free, which is great but it's off-white, it's like cream. So if I order doors, they're not gonna match up. And then I'm not sure if I would get as much in. Like maybe, you know, I could roll, so I open the door, then I'd see it all like in rolls like Marie Kondo and then lined up and then I could see what fabrics I've got. I have a tendency to keep remnants and I think I'll keep that for a pocket lining or I'll keep that for this or that. Never, And then I never use it. And then it's just taking up all this space. And then I feel, Oh, well, I can't order any more fabrics because, like, let me show you. Let me show you. <laughs> okay, so this corner here has tracing paper in it. So I have some rolls of two rolls. I have tracing paper, then a Swedish tracing paper. That's fine. I have this, which is a plastic bag, which has the, like, the templates for making my husband's cosplay. I just shove them in that bag. I then have a skirt that I've cut out. Well, I've cut the pattern pieces out and I just shortened them last night. It's a panelled skirt by Sew Over It. It's a Kate skirt. That's just there. And then the fabric to make the skirt is sitting here. I then have my sewing box, which is kind of relatively full. I have some muslins for my husband's cosplay. I think what I need is a project bag. Do you have project bags so I can then zip it up or something? So it's all enclosed, so pattern pieces and things. I mean, I don't often have works in progress. I usually make something then that's it. But like my husband, I moan at my husband all the time about him leaving stuff everywhere because being a cosplayer, he, cre he creates stuff. We have a 3D printer in the living room for goodness sake, but that's, um, that's going to be dealt with. We want to convert our garage to a workshop so he can then move all his stuff out. So he has his space because I've basically claimed the conservatory and you see the conservatory and he just says, well, my stuff's everywhere. And if I'm making something, it's a mess. And he's right, I overflow and I cut this out and then I have it everywhere. And then I'm um, on this chair. So I've pushed the chair in, but this is some of the fabric. So this is some fabric I haven't pre-washed because our washing machine broke and we didn't have a washing machine for two weeks. And then I spent about and then I spent a whole week catching up on washing. So that needs to be pre-washed, but then it doesn't actually fit in my drawers because my drawers are full. This is a muslin for something. I can't remember what one. This is one meter of chambray, which I worked out is not enough for shorts. And then this is t-shirting fabric, which I've got really cheap, but I don't know where to put it. So I just shove it on a drawer and then shove it in there. And then I have my vintage Singer 201K. You can maybe just see the hard case, which is under there. There's a random tape measure, which I think that was on the dining room table. Then when we ate tea, we've kind of just moved it out of the way. I'm hoping that if I show you my mess, that it might make you feel better if yours is, is even like a lot tidier than this. But I don't know. I just thought it would help motivate me and then I can give you an update later on. 
um, just to let you know how I'm doing. So there's a puzzle book I bought when I went, was going taking the kids to the beach. Tesco Handy Crisscross Selection. I actually used to like these ones. So you have, um, it tells you how many letters in the word and then you have to fill in the gaps. Now this is what I do. I decluttered two, if not three drawers in a sideboard in the living room. But while I was doing that, I was like, oh, what's this? Oh, look at these photos. And I get distracted, which I think is someone who just has too much clutter in the house. Don't you think? I came across this big tub of fabric glue from Hobbycraft. Although I then did use it because my daughter's hairband um, came unstuck and she'd stuck it back together with sellers tape. And I was like, I found some fabric glue. Let's glue that. But then where do I put it? I will show you a new pattern. I mean, I'm talking about decluttering and then I've just gained something. Let me pan you up because I feel like... Oh, there we go. And now you're on the wonk. Yes, I'm talking about decluttering and then I'm going to show you what I wrote yesterday from Amazon. But it's only one pattern, which is a very easy Vogue V9053. So in my quest for finding a summer dress pattern, and especially for my, gold, my parents' golden wedding anniversary and their 50 years of marriage, I thought that this one here would make a really nice summery outfit. I'm leaning more towards v-necks. I think they are a bit more flattering than a round neck, especially on a dress. On myself, I found I've had more compliments. When I've worn a, a v-neck, I think it just suits my proportions more. And it has a thicker strap and it go, it's not a low back. And I was going to make obviously just like sort of to hit the knee and I do have three meters of a viscose that I got from Rainbow Fabrics which has navy monkeys on. I also have a leaf print one and they weren't that expensive. I'm hoping at some point to get on with that but I need, I think I need to tidy before I can start another project because there's just stuff everywhere. So if you have any ideas of project bags or how you organize your projects and things like that so you can then work on them and perhaps tidy them away, let me know because I don't have a room, like some people have a space or a room which is you can close the door on. I can't. I do have a set of curtains, but you know, summertime it's all open plan. So let me just take you, take you on a journey. I feel like I'm just shaming myself and I don't want this to be, I don't want this to be a negative video. I'm just hoping that it will maybe encourage other people and let me know in the comments down below if you feel that you have feel you feel like you have to sort of have more stuff. I don't I don't feel pressure from anyone else. I just feel like, oh yes, I'd like that. Oh, I see other people making something. Oh, I'd like to see that. But I do need to recognise that maybe I do need to become some kind of minimalist. I don't think I'm ever gonna be a minimal minimalist. But I am finding that every weekend I'm I'm just spending it doing errands and housework and like Saturday's gone like that gone so I'm trying to not nap as much after my because I do an 80 mile commute every day and it's really taken it out of me and I have like a quick power nap before cooking tea but I think if I come home or like half an hour when it's lunch if I haven't hung around at work whip the hoover around or quickly tidy something up or wash something up or cut a pattern piece out or cut some fabric out or iron the fabric ready and I think I need to break up my time into little slots to be more productive. So I'll show you the drawers. So here are my drawers. Let me start off with, so this one is the one closest to where I work. So it's the one where I can just dip my hand in and get bits and pieces. So in here we have that this is really handy actually. Anna from You Got Me In Stitches, she sent me this. I think it was at Christmas time. And I keep scotch tape and my pens and pencils. And uh, I think I've got glue stick in the front of this. And so for PDFs or anything, tracing out, I've kept that, I've organized that. Thank you, Anna, that is coming really handy. So I put that there, but then, wait for it. Do you love a notebook? Let's just, I think we'll get a bit closer, hang on. Do you love a notebook as much as me? Well, I did have a clear out once and I found seven unused notebooks. So here we have a picture of the design I used to do for my husband's cosplay. So this one here I record my, well, although I'm a bit behind, but my de all the details for my monthly makes as I make things. I'm trying to get them organized as I go along. This one has bits and bobs in for YouTube, um, like draft um, notes and things before I transfer them into there. I have some post-it notes. 
We have, oh yes, a pattern which I'm basing uh, my husband's pattern on. Some sewing feet. My colleague at work gave me a late birthday present and it actually, this matches my dining room. So it's all post-it notes in a notebook and it's all the same colour as the curtains that I've made. So that was really nice. And I didn't want to keep it out into the sun and for it to fade. So that's another notebook. Another notebook. Notebook. Two more notebooks. My button tin, which is just rammed in. So if I want buttons, it's literally a rummage to see what I've got and if I have enough. Um, a box of embroidery threads, which were my mum's and I gained them along the way somewhere. I did a bit of craft at, um, at Christmas time with them, but that was it. So this is my sewing box. So this is what I had since I was a child. It feels heavy, there's something in it. So this is all snapped off and it's all yellow. And then, I don't even know what, what is so heavy? Um, there's like some pens. Oh, there's like a tool. My husband gave me a tool for, um, for like getting the needle plate off, I think, of the sewing machine. I think it's getting rid of so, I mean that takes up a lot of space and then it's just junk. I've actually lost my French curve which I think, oh there it is, I keep losing this. I was looking for that. Just stuff, just bits and pieces like there's some bias binding which I probably won't use because it feels really rough. Oh, do you know what? I thought I'd bought a pack of three glue sticks and then I went to go and get one the other day and then look, there they are. Okay, so clearly I do need to sort my life out look, because look, one, two, three, four more notebooks. What's that? That's a remote for a light, I think. It has no batteries in it. There's some zips I bought on a D stash. A bit of random tracing paper. I bought these embroidery hoops um, at Christmas for Christmas time so they're really small I was going to make decorations and hang them out or give them out but with those threads but I didn't and um, I practiced and they didn't come out very well so I still have them and then look it's like then it all gets shoved in so this is the drawer which I'm supposed to have easy access to I can't even get this back now because it's all disorganized so maybe I think I, this weekend, sort that one out. That is only draw one. Let, so I don't bore you, I'll just quickly nip onto the patterns. So these are my big four patterns that I keep. And I have shown this in the Get To Know Friday Sews video, but it is rammed, it is full. So I have layered up and um, there's so many. So we have all these on top and then and you see, they're all slotted in there. And most of them, if I have made them, I've cut them, I haven't traced them. Some of them are now too small, since I put on a bit of weight. Um, so they would have to be graded up until I can fit back in them again. And others I've made, you know, like I had just, I had an absolute disaster with these deer and doe trousers. So why on earth am I keeping them? I feel like there are patterns in here there are patterns in here that I have made once. I've cut them out, I've made them, and maybe I have worn the dress, but perhaps my proportions have changed, or once I made them I realised that I'd made it a bit tight, or it needed like a narrow shoulder adjustment, or something like that. And because the pattern's all cut and in bits, or it had those E's at the back, and it didn't, I didn't really like it, I haven't got rid of it. I still have it. Why have I got it? Because then, when I actually have fabric that I will make into something, I've got nowhere to put it, I'm storing it on a chair because my drawers are full of stuff. Full, full. I know this is really embarrassing and everyone else is probably thinking, how can you live like that? And um, yeah, everywhere is <laughs> full. So we have a remnant here from my beach bag and I might make something else with it. So that's in there. And then like this. This is from my Porto trousers from the Sew Over It 
um, ebook. But there's not even enough to make a top, but I felt that there was too much to throw away. So that's just shoved in there. And it's, it's like really rammed. So this here has, um, I have interfacing in there. I have felt, and it's kind of like Christmas fabrics. So that's hidden away, but it does take up quite a bit of space. Bear in mind it is just for Christmas. So maybe what I need to do is transfer the Christmas things into a box and put them upstairs. So um, there is space in the top. My, my kids have got built-in cupboards as well as wardrobes. And so they've got like a sort of a wardrobe and then there's a shelf which they can't reach, it's too high. So maybe I should put the Christmas stuff in a box, label it, put it up there so I remember. So in December or late November, once you do some Christmas crafts, I can get it out and then in the meantime, I can put things in there that I'm actually going to use. So I could put some notebooks, not all like 10 or whatever that I found. Or I could put, you know, keep the interfacing in there, maybe some other bits and pieces. Now I bought this sewing box off eBay and um, it's actually really handy. I thought it was going to be a lot bigger than what it turned out to be, but it's really useful. So I keep like my ni It's really useful. So I've got like my bobbins in a box here, and then I keep all my needles and things in here. I've got some elastic here, all my scissors and everything, because it opens out and I can access it. All my scissors, and there's a rotary cutter in there. I've got more elastic in here, and then this one, I've got tape measure. Um, these are the accessories for holding the spools on, and there's um, some beeswax in there. So this one sits, and it's quite useful for them reaching and changing the needle and that kind of thing. What do you think? Where should I start? Do you... I know that if I start with the patterns, I'm going to be looking through every pattern. Oh, oh, perhaps if I go through the patterns and I find some which I haven't used, but I'm not going to use, I can then list them for sale on a de-stash site on Facebook Marketplace or something like that, and then try and get rid of them. And I think if I've had any that I've made and I didn't like, I would just put them in the recycling bin because they're no good to anyone else because I've cut into them. I think I need to sort that out because I won't even, I don't even dare show you my PDF drawer because that is 10 times worse. It's in brown envelopes which are ripped because the A4 paper that I've printed out on is too thick. So I need some kind of like cardboard file. And now I remember seeing Sean from Kittenish Behaviour. She has some kind of system going on there with PDF patterns and they're in these nice sort of cardboard slim files and she prints the picture out and sticks it on the front. I've literally got a Sharpie pen. Um, <laughs> I would show you, but it's awful. I've got a Sharpie pen over there, like a brown envelope, and everything's just rammed in there, so you can't really find anything. And I've also got patterns that I've printed out, and I've no intention of making again, but I still got them. I just hold on to stuff, and I need to start somewhere because I feel like it's taking over the house, and I've ma it makes me feel overwhelmed and. It doesn't make me feel positive. It's not a positive experience. Some people like to collect stuff and seeing all the fabrics they have just makes them feel good and seeing all the patterns and th thumbing through them makes them feel good and happy. And if you're one of them, then that is absolutely great. And you know, that's perfect for you. But for me, it's too much stuff. I feel like it's weighing me down. I feel like then I've got no room for stuff. I'm quite limited on space. I don't want to start overflowing into room after room after room. So I need a system. So I am trying to get on track and I feel like I need to just sort out from different areas of the house and then it will be a lot easier and quicker for cleaning. More time to sew and more space. So I need to sort this out. These patterns behind me that I maybe do a video about sometime, they were given to me. So I don't feel like I could sell them because they would then know, because they live local, they would know if I'm selling them and like they've given to me and I feel like I should. But they're too, and I, if I give them to the charity shop, they might just ditch them. So I'm not sure. So I think I will probably do a video about they are vintage patterns from the 1980s and it's worth a giggle on some of the um, designs. But I think once I've done that, I don't think I'm gonna hold on to that, which will free up some space. And some of them are overflowing because they're on the floor of my bedroom because they came with a folder and some boxes. 
He said, as a family friend, and he said, I've got the, I found these in my loft. They belong to my ex-wife. Do you want them? I mean, maybe his ex-wife wants them, but I don't think she had a say in it. So I was like, oh yeah, well, that's fine. I'll have some sewing patterns. And then he rocks up with all this stuff. And so, of course, I had to take it. And now I feel like I can't get rid of it because he, he gave it to me. <laughs> Oh, vicious circle. I need to just say no. But then I also find I'll go into town and I'm like, oh, I'll just nip into the charity shop, see if they've got any fabric or curtains or duvets that I could use and then cut up. And then I get more stuff. And then sometimes I hold on to it for so long that I'm like, okay, I need to ditch it. And I'm like, what a waste. Oh, too much. I bought the fabric. Eventually I made the beach bag, but I needed the beach bags. That was something I made. I will get use out of it. I think I need to be more logical with the things I made. What do you do? What's your thought process? Do you just, do you have fabric? I mean, I'm sure there are lots of people who have fabrics that just sit and they don't want to cut into it because it's like precious fabric. Some of this fabric I have isn't precious fabric. I just feel like I've got nowhere to kind of like spread out to cut and sew. So tell me your tips. Can you give me your tips down in the comments below? And if I get enough, I will do a quick video listing everybody's tips. So if you don't want to be included, if you don't want your name mentioned, then just put the comment, but just say you don't want your name mentioned. But I think I'll do a video. If you put in your tips for organizing, how you organize your sewing stuff, do you have too much stuff? Do you like to collect? How would you suggest that I sort this out? Where should I start? I need your help. Please help. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.